So in this series, up to this point, we've modeled things that have been kind of square in the sense that they uh, basically are you drawing a profile and then push-pulling it. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about another way of creating things inside your models using extrusions. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about how we can create shapes like this chess piece right here, as well as creating a chess board. And so this is going to allow you to use um, what's known as an extrusion along an arc in order to create a shape. And so first off, let's go ahead and let's create our chess board. So to do that, we're gonna start by tapping the R key on our keyboard to draw a rectangle. And in this case, we're gonna draw a two inch by two inch rectangle right here. And then we're gonna make a copy of it using the move tool. So select move tool in copy mode. So M control click. So we've got our two different board pieces right here. Well, what we wanna do is we want to color these up separately before we do anything else. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna go into our materials. And for now, let's do something simple with our colors. So we're just going to do a black and a white right here. So you've got those two different colors in here. And what you wanna do is you wanna double click on each one of these and make it a component. So we're gonna call this black square this one, we're gonna double click and we're gonna make it a component and we're gonna call it white square, like this. And so what we wanna do is we wanna create copies of these um, so that we have our chess board. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the move tool in copy mode and tap the M key, single click on this corner and tap control right here. Then we're gonna do the same thing over here. Tap control, move it right here. So um, this is going to be eight pieces long. So I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode again. And this time, remember that we can use the array function. So I'm gonna type in times three and hit the enter key. Now we've got our two pieces in here and we just wanna take them, select them, use the move tool in copy mode. And we wanna type in times three once we've hit this, uh, once we've clicked on this point and hit the enter key again. So now we have our chessboard, and we could get all sorts of uh, complicated with this if we wanted to because these are components. So for example, I could push pull each one of these up and notice how the other um, copies of this are going to move up as well. So we could scale this about center if we decided that we wanted to do that. It's just kind of one of those fun things that you can do with components if you decide that you want to do it. Maybe I'll leave it like this just because it's a little bit more interesting. But now we've got our chess board in here. Well, now we want to model our chess pieces. And so up till now, what we've done, and I'm going to go ahead and take this whole board and make it a group. What we've done up till now is we've created shapes by drawing things like circles, right? So I'm going to draw a circle right here. And what we've done in the past is we've push pulled it up. And then if we wanted anything to move like inward or outward or anything like that, we've just used the scale tool in order to give it that kind of like inward scale, right? And that's definitely a valid way to do that. You could try to create your entire chess piece doing that, but there's an easier way to do this. So just a reminder that I have 52 days to try to beat SketchUp in subscribers. So I've got a long way to go. So if you haven't clicked that subscribe button, there's going to be a lot of great stuff coming up over the next 52 days. So uh, make sure that you click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on anything. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a reference image in order to draw one of my chess pieces. So the way that that works is we're going to take an image so in this case, I've just Googled a chess piece that's kind of close to what I'm looking for, and I'm gonna import that image. And so what I wanna do is I just wanna click on this button right here, and there's an option in here for import from my device. And so there's options in here to not only import SketchUp files, but also other image files. For all my pro version folks, it's just file import in order to bring an image in. And then you can just select the image type that you want from the dropdown. But we wanna go ahead and we wanna go find that file. So in this case, right, I've got this image called chess piece. I'm just gonna double click it to bring it in. And it's gonna give me options to bring this in as either an image or a material. In this case, I wanna select the option for image. And so notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring this in. And in this case, it's gonna lay it down, which is fine, but you're just gonna click in order to place this. And then you can move your mouse in order to set the size. We can also adjust the size later. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna tap the Q key and then the right arrow button in order to lock this to the red axis. That's gonna allow me to click on this point here, this point here, and it's gonna let me stand the image up. So we're gonna stand this up just like here and 
now we're good to go. And so what I want to do is I want to draw the profile of this chess piece. And really I want to draw half of it because what we're going to do is we're going to take the profile or the outline of this shape and then we're going to basically lathe it in a circle using a tool. So uh, the first thing I usually do with something like this is I'll usually start by finding the midpoint. So I'll just draw a line like this. And we're going to get pretty close. We don't necessarily have to be exact with what we're trying to do here. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically trace the outline in here. And so we're just going to use the arc tool in order to do this. And so if you're at the point where it's kind of like inferencing and jumping around and everything's just too small, one thing that I've done in the past is I may take this whole thing and move it off to the side and I may just make it bigger. So I might scale it up by a factor of like 10 and then we'll scale it back down. That way this isn't giving me so many issues with the number of like segments in here or anything like this. But what we want to do is we just want to trace out the shapes that are in here of the different profiles, right? So you can see how, for example, this one has some different profiles or different curves in here. And I'm just trying to pick those up on this surface, right? So you can see how I'm just drawing arcs along here in order to follow along with this curve. So something like this, this might go straight up a little bit, maybe in a little bit like this. Another thing you can also do if you want to round something off is you can draw this straight and then use the arc tool to round it off like this. Notice how if I click and then double click over here, it's going to remove out this edge automatically. But now we're going to draw this arc right here, which is kind of a bigger one. One thing you want to make sure that you're doing is you want to make sure that you're drawing these flat on the surface right here um, so that you don't have anything like hanging off into space because we're going to want to close this in um, in a second. So we want to make sure that everything we draw is on the same plane or coplanar. And then this top piece, we don't necessarily want that in here because we're going to have to draw that separately. But notice what I've done is I've come in here and I've created the profile of a chess piece like this. All right, and so now what I want to do is I want to extrude this in a circle, right? Um, because we've got our profile now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my image and I'm going to hide it. And so let's start by drawing a circle in here. So I'm just going to use the C key and draw a circle that's flat like this. And now we're going to use a tool called the follow me tool. So you can come over here to the left hand side and find the follow me tool by clicking on the little push pull button right here and clicking on follow me. Um, alternatively, on the desktop version, you can just right click in your toolbar area and make sure you've turned on the large tool set and you can find that tool over here. But now what I want to do is I want to start by selecting this circle right here. And so the online version is being a little bit twitchy with this right here. Um, but what you do is you activate the tool, right? And you find the profile that you want to, ex want to extrude. In this, in this case, we're going to click on this face right here and then we're just going to move our mouse down. And I think that the alt key over this face um, makes this pick the face perimeter of what we have selected here, but I'm not really sure. What it should do is it should just extrude it along the path. And I'm not really sure why it's not doing that. And so just kind of move your mouse around a little bit until it follows along with this path. Like I said, I have no idea why it's jumping around like that on me, um, but you can see how when it does what it's supposed to do, it creates this nice extruded shape right here. And so from there, you can go ahead and you can unhide your image. So you can do that over in your display on the right hand side. So you can do an unhide all so you can see that image again. And what I want to do is I just want to rough out this shape that goes on the top, this kind of like cross shape. And so I'm just going to kind of rough out this shape. I'm not going to get too crazy with it right now. And usually what I'll do with something like this that has multiple edges is I'll just select them like this. Then I'll use the move tool in copy mode and create a copy off to the side. And then I'll just scale it to negative one. And it looks like I picked up a little extra piece, so we'll erase that. But then I'm just going to move this back like this. And usually you can just draw over one of these edges once you close this in order to get this to show up. But now I'm going to right click on this, hide it. And I'm going to push pull this little cross shape out this way and this way. 
like this. So this is our large chess piece. Remember that we drew this to a scale of 10, so I'm just gonna scale it back down uniformly by a value of 0.1. So that's gonna give me that same correct size. And so then I'm just gonna right click on it, I'm gonna make it a component, and we're just gonna call this the, I think this is the king. Click on okay. And so just real quick to make this easier to move, I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna draw a line to the center right here. That way now when I try to move it around, I have something that I can uh, click on really easily, like a guide point. But now I can take this whole thing and I can put it on the surface right here. So. We've modeled the king. We're not gonna model all of the pieces. There is one other piece I wanna create because it's interesting. And so that piece is the rook. So we're gonna import an image of a rook right here. We're gonna do the same thing. We'll import this as an image, set the, si the size to about what we want it to be, and then we'll stand it up with this tool. And then again, just to make sure that it's big enough, I'm going to move it off to the side. I'm gonna scale it to a factor of 10. And again, you don't have to do that. I just find it makes the inferencing process a little bit easier. But what we wanna do now is we want to draw a line down and just do the same thing where we draw the profile of our chess piece. Okay, and so we've done that. And what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and extrude this, but the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that when we draw this in here, that we draw an edge down so that you've got this kind of like hollow piece that goes along the top right here. So we've got the top of our rook piece. I'm gonna make a copy of this just in case we need to try something again. Um, I'll do this a bunch where I make a spare copy off to the side when I'm not sure exactly what something's gonna do. And so we're gonna draw our circle in here. We're going to right click and hide our image. And then we're gonna use the um, follow me tool in order to extrude this along this circle. So we're gonna come in here, activate follow me, select our profile, extrude this along our circle. So we've got this rook piece, but we've got a problem. And the problem is that our top piece needs some stuff to be removed, right? Because basically what you've got in here is you've got um, something that needs to have little like recesses in here. And so if we look at this, remember that SketchUp uses the segments that are in here in order to make up this surface. Well, the nice thing about that is that gives us this nice point that we can come in here and we can draw edges from. So, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into a top-down view. So we're gonna go into our views right here, go to top-down. And in this case, it actually helps me to turn off perspective mode so that we're straight up and down. But what you can do is you can find the central point of this circle. So usually you can just draw a line across these two and then find the middle point right here. But you can use the rotate tool in copy mode the same way that you can the move tool. So I have this selected, I'm gonna tap the Q key, and I'm gonna use the rotate tool in a top-down view in order to create a copy of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this is at 60 degrees right here. So again, remember you tap the control key in order to go into copy mode, and you can find these points in here in order to make this easier. Notice how it's inferencing to them. But then you can type in times and the number of copies you wanna create. Well, in this case, I created five copies. Right, so now those five copies are equally spaced around here. Well, because these surfaces are flat and I'm extruding them down, I can push pull this down by whatever depth I want. So in this case, maybe like an inch and a half. And then, and we can toggle perspective mode back on, but then remember the push pull tool remembers how far you extruded things and you can repeat it by double clicking. I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna double click on each one of those in order to remove that material. Then we'll just take this whole thing, we'll make it a component and we'll call it Rook. We'll just scale it down by a factor of 0.1. And again, we can draw our little inference line on the bottom if we decide that we wanna do that. So um, I'm gonna draw a line across like this. And so that's just gonna be something that I can inference to to move this, I'm gonna move this down and align it with this surface right here. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. Extruding in circles can be a little tricky, so let me know if you get stuck on anything. I will link to the next video on this series on this page as soon as it's ready to go. Remember that you can download those example files at the sketchupessentials.com slash 30 days. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.